There's a holdup in the Bronx, Brooklyn's broken out in fights. There's a traffic jam in Harlem that's backed up to Jackson Heights. There's a scout troop short a child, cruise ships do an idle wild. Car 54, where are you? Lucille, I'm glad I ran into you. I forgot to mention Francis and I go fishing. I know. I got your letter. Did it ever occur to you to spend your day off with your wife? Go fishing. Don't worry about how I spend the day. I have plenty to do. I have to catch up on my correspondence. I have letters to answer. Letters that I find on my stomach in the morning. I promise you, Lucille, this is the last time. Well, it better be, because next week we're going on a picnic with my sister Rose and Al. Oh, boy, a picnic with Rose and Al. What fun. <laughs> oh, uh, here are the worms. Would you bait my hook for me? Uh, I had spaghetti last night. Yeah. Oh, oh. Boy, look at that baby. Hey, I'll bet they're going way out to Montauk Point. Swordfish. I wish we were on that. Oh, boy, just once in my life, I'd like a crack at a swordfish. Wham! They take the bait. Then they break water. 300 pounds of fighting fish dancing on its tail. Look at that rich buff. He sure got it made. Hey, please. Hey, oh, no. <laughs> hey it's O'Hara. Hi, Dennis. How does a cop from our police and raid a cruiser like that? Brother-in-law, he's in the advertising business. It's his boat. Hey, I'm going to ask O'Hara to ask his brother-in-law to invite us on that cruiser. Oh, no, you don't. O'Hara hardly ever sees his brother-in-law. It'll embarrass him. Don't you dare ask. Well, what if I bring it up sort of casual-like? No. How about if I give him a, a hint? <laughs> Tootie, for the last time, I am not going to ask my brother-in-law if I can take along two complete strangers the next time he goes fishing on his cruiser. He doesn't like strangers. He doesn't like me. Well, what's it going to hurt if he just asks? Will you get off my back? I'm not going to ask. But Dennis, who knows? Someday he may decide to go out fishing, and he'll want two jolly companions along. He has a $30,000 boat. He doesn't need jolly companions. And what's suddenly so jolly about you and Muldoon? The answer is no, and that's final. Well, can't you mention it kind of casual? Oh, but Pete's ain't got to leave him alone. I think it's a lot of nerve trying to get yourself invited on a stranger's boat. It certainly is. Excuse me. You had to stick your nose in just when I had him weakening. Weakening? He was about to punch you in the nose. Come on, sign out and let's go home. Muldoon, take these dailies up to O'Hara. Tell him his weekly report is due. Sure thing. Hey, what do you think of the new duty board? Huh? My son made it. It's crazy, ain't it? Beautiful. Sure looks neat. Yeah, well, let's keep it that way, huh, fellas? You know, now you can finally tell... Anderson, what happened? Somebody must have brushed against it. Will you fellas just stay away from the board? Please, get away from the board. I'll fix it right up, Captain. Boy, if that O'Hara was only a pal. Look, Gunther, what do you want from O'Hara? What did we ever do for him? Yeah. Oh, oh, give me O'Hara's dailies. What are you doing? Sit down. You know how much O'Hara hates paperwork. Well, I'm going to make out his weekly report for him. You make out his weekly report? Yeah. 
You said it before. What did we ever do for him? Well, from now on, we're going to do everything for him. We're going to show him that we're the best friends he ever had. By the time we're through, he'll feel like a heel if he doesn't ask his brother-in-law to invite us on that cruise. Gunther, how low can you get? Francis, this may be the only chance in your life to get a swordfish. Now think. Think of any favors we can do for O'Hara. Count me out. That's as sneaky an operation as I've ever heard. Francis, does a swordfish nibble when he strikes? Nibble? There's a whack. Then out goes the line, and there's 300 pounds of fighting fish dancing on his tail. We can take him bowling. He likes pizzas. He's always belly aching about taking the subway. <laughs> All right, Andy. O'Hara, here are the keys to Muldoon's car. It's parked in front. Muldoon's car? Well, he said he didn't need it, and he thought you might like a nice ride home on a hot day instead of the subway. No kidding. Wait, uh, these are from Duty. <laughs> Flowers? Yeah, he got them from an undertaker in his sector, and he thought your wife Helen would like them. How about that? <laughs> Flowers for Helen. Look, Helen. Don't look out! I told you, for Callum, I gave him. Who is she? Now, look, Helen. I can smell a guilty conscience a mile off. Is it the same one who gave you the car you drove home in? I told you, a pal of mine from the precinct, Muldoon. He did me a favor and let me use his car. Suddenly, he's loaded with pals. Please, Helen, I gotta change my pants. They left a the pizza in the front seat. I didn't see it in time. Uh, Joy riding in cars, girls, pizzas. It's a gay life you lead, Dennis. Well, well I didn't stop. really stop. <laughs> I tell you, it's nobody but you. Hello? Oh, hello, Tootie. No, uh, I can't tonight. No, uh, not tonight, no. Who's Tootsie? Oh, it's Tootie, not Tootsie. Tootie or Tootsie? Who is she? It's a he, a Gunther Tootie, a pal of mine from the precinct. He wanted me to go bowling tonight. Another pal? How come I never heard of him? Helen, please. Hello? Oh, uh, hello, Francis. Francis, another one! Oh, excuse me, Francis, I can't talk to you anymore. Now, look, so, so now it's Francis. Now, One at a time isn't enough for you, Pussy and Francis. Oh, Aaron. Yes, Captain? You want to start your day off with a laugh? A laugh? I could sure use one. Now, all right, listen to this. Monday, June the 10th, 9.32 a.m., arrested black and white cat on West Side Highway for driving without a license. <laughs> 10.42 a.m., rescued Mrs. J.P. Simpson in blue convertible that was stuck in a rain pipe. <laughs> Whose report is that? Yours. <laughs> now, wait, wait, it gets better. 11.43 a.m., proceeded to back of Hagemeyer's garage and arrested a cocker spaniel on suspicion of running a floating crap game. Now, well, Hagemeyer, I can explain it. 2.10 p.m., gave summons to a Mr. Otto Schwarzkopf for walking his wife without a leash. <laughs> Listen, O'Hara, this is a police report, not a script for Milton Burrow. But I didn't hand that in. You don't have to explain. There's only one scatterbrain in this precinct who would mess up a report like this. Tootie, now there's a bigger scatterbrain. You for letting him do it. I guess he was just trying to do me another favor. I want this back before you go on duty. Yes, Captain. And I'll tell you another reason why Dennis O'Hara should be president of our Brotherhood Club. He's got heart. Let's all get out of bandwagon, fellas. Tootie, will you lay off? Okay, you don't believe me? Well, listen to Muldoon. Tell him about O'Hara. Tell him what kind of a great president he'll make for our Brotherhood Club. He's all right, I guess. Did you hear that? That was Muldoon. Here comes your candidate. And another thing about O'Hara, he's got gratitude. Do him a favor, and he'll always do you a favor. Tootie, I want to talk to you. Oh, here he is. How about it, fellas? But he's a oh, gentleman. Nah, nah. <laughs> Forget about this president business. Are you kidding? You're in. You should have just heard what Muldoon said about you. Tell him, Francis. Never mind. You win. I'm going to ask my brother-in-law. Your brother-in-law? Yes. I'm going to ask him if he'll take you deep sea fishing on his cabin cruise. I'm going to ask him tonight, but under one condition. One condition? No more favors, do you hear? Don't do me any more favors. Don't even lift a finger for me anymore. If you see me hit by a car on the street, let me lay there, do you understand? <laughs> no more favors. I'll phone you tonight and let you know what he says. And I'll bring the potato salad and the ham, and if it rains, we can come back here. What is it, Gunther? You've been in that for a half hour. Well, I'm arranging about the picnic for next Wednesday. Wednesday. Why, are you expecting a phone call? No, no, it's just that I don't get a chance to talk to you anymore. I have to hang up now, Rose. Gunther wants to talk. What is it? How about the Yankees? They got a good ball team, huh? <laughs> is that all you wanted to say? Wait, I'll get it. Hello? Gunther, I spoke to my brother-in-law. It took a lot of doing. 
Be at the fishing dock Wednesday morning. Oh, oh, wait. I'll ask my wife. Ask me what? Lucille, if the moment you dreamt about all your life suddenly came true... Get to the point. Can I go fishing Wednesday? Okay, Gunther. This is it. I'm glad it's out in the open now. I'm glad it's come to a head. If going fishing means more to you than our 15 years of married life, if going fishing means more to you than the happiness of your wife, if going fishing means more to you than all the happiness we can have in the future, then you can go fishing. She says I can go. <laughs> Thanks, Monsieur. I'll never forget you for this. I'm married to a nut. Oh, Monsieur, I'm not the window again. Listen, America! I'm married to a nut! I, Lucille Fleischer, who had to pick up every eligible young man in the East Bronx! I'm married to a nut! Lucille, what are you yelling? Everybody knows it. But last night you said it was Wednesday. Tootie, I told you my brother-in-law called. He has a big meeting Wednesday. He's taking the boat out Thursday. Well, we're already off on Wednesdays. We can't go Thursdays. Well, that's going to break my brother-in-law's heart. But he's a rich man. He can afford to take an around-the-world cruise to forget it. It's Thursday. We got to do something. Yeah. Let's forget all about it. Are you kidding? It's a cinch. All we got to do is switch our day off with the team that's off Thursday. Who's off Thursday? Wallace and Nelson. Get away from that boy. <laughs> well, all we want to do is switch our day off with the team that's off Thursday. Just when I finally get the schedule all set for the week. Please, sir, Gunther and I have a chance to go fishing for swordfish on a cruiser. Yeah, can't we switch Wallace and Nelson? Get away from the boy. <laughs> all right. If it's OK we'll, with Wallace and Nelson, go ahead. Oh, thank you, Captain. Come on, Fred. Look, if it means how much to you, it's all right with me. But you better ask my partner, Wallace. Where is he? Wherever there's a deck of cards. The detention cell. Let's go. <laughs> help you out, boys, but I was going to take the kids to the ball game Thursday. Can't you take them Wednesday? Well, it's a night game. Of course, I could take them Saturday. Who's off Saturday? Nicholson and Steinmetz. Thanks, Wally. <laughs> All right, glad to help you out. How about it, Joe? You switch Wednesday with us. Then Nelson and Wallace, who have Thursday off, can switch to Saturday. It's all right with me, but you better see my partner, Nicholson. Nicholson. <laughs> what do you say, Ed? I was going to the beach for my brother Saturday. I could probably change it to Monday. Can you switch us to Monday? Who's got Monday? Nelson and Hawker. Come on, let's go. What about it, Harry? I'll take off Monday, but not for Wednesday. What if I can get Tuesday off? Tuesday. Moskowitz and O'Brien. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Captain, we got it all worked out. Mm, good, good. We got Wallace and Riley to switch. Fine, fine. Andy. Yeah? Would you make these changes? Sure, Teddy. Thank you. Uh, here are the traffic court schedules for the week, fellas. Right, sir. A few changes, huh? <laughs> yes, Captain. Uh, Andy, am I still with the precinct? <laughs> I think so. Get that mess cleaned up! <laughs> now, you say the first time a swordfish strikes, they don't yank the pole? No, you just stun the bait. It's the second time when you haul back on the pole. What's the matter? The whole thing's off. Off. You heard me. It's all over. But he's gone Thursday, and we're off Thursday. We're scheduled for traffic court on Thursday. Traffic court? That's right. Any tickets we give out this week, they come to court. we got to be there for witnesses Thursday. Wait a minute. Nicholson and Steinmetz were bellyaching about a special assignment they got all week. A stakeout detail. And they don't have to give out traffic tickets. Let's go. Sure. I don't care if they don't write one traffic ticket all week. There have been seven burglaries in that area. I want it watched. I know. That's why I think Muldoon and me are the best men for that detail. You? Yes, sir. We're up on every burglary suspect in that area. Aren't we, Francis? Uh, Joseph Bukov, alias Little Joe, alias Joe the Russian, alias Featherfeet. Five foot ten, 163 pounds, has scar on left shoulder. All right. 
Harry Appleby, alias Harry the Hog, 5'4", 235 pounds, usually poses as a health food salesman. All right, all right. Louis Rodriguez, alias Louis Olsen, alias <laughs> Mr. Tweed. That's alias... enough. So that's what you were doing at the ID files all morning. How about it, Captain? All right. It's okay with Nicholson and Steinmetz. <laughs> but you said you hated that stakeout detail. Yeah, but if we go back on traffic detail, our court day is Monday which is our day off, now that we've switched from Saturday. Switch us back to Saturday, and you've got a deal. Saturday. Now, if you take Wednesday, Moskowitz will switch to Friday. That'll give you Thursday. Get me Tuesday. Tuesday? <laughs> Moskowitz is willing to give up Wednesday. If you and Nelson switch back from Tuesday to Monday. Who wants Monday? Get me Friday. 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 <laughs> uh, Captain. Yeah, wait, wait, excuse me. Andy, the, the end in Nicholson, it's not quite straight. Straighten out those ends there. <laughs> neat, neat. Remember, Andy. It's straight. Uh, Captain. Yeah. Uh, just checking. Is this the stakeout area? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's it. And especially keep an eye on that corner right there. Yes, sir. All right, let's go. Here, Andy. Gee, thanks, Captain. And don't be surprised if a couple of big swordfish steaks will be delivered to your house Thursday night. Swordfish? My weakness. <laughs> you see anybody suspicious? No use. Everybody I look at looks like a swordfish. <laughs> I gotta hand it to you, Gunther. Getting us off traffic detail. That was genius. Gee, thanks, Francis. He took the stop sign. What are you doing? You stopped the car. Are you crazy? Well, he jumped the stop sign. We're not on traffic detail. I forgot. I did it from force of habit. Force of habit. After all we went through. Don't worry. I'll just ball him out, and I'll let him go. Whatever you do, don't give him a ticket. Don't worry. Leave it to me. <laughs> don't give him a ticket. Uh, you jumped the stop sign, mister. Here's my driver's license and registration. Harold Conroy. That's right. Mr. Conroy, you saved two seconds by jumping that stop sign. And those two seconds could put you in a hospital, or maybe even worse than that. However... Look, if I wanted a lecture today, I'd go to Columbia University. Just give me the ticket and let me go. Ticket? Well, well I'm just doing my duty. Okay. Do it. Give me the ticket. What kind of an attitude is that to take? <laughs> I can't even find an orderly, reasonable way. Look, officer, you say I jumped the stop sign, I say I didn't. I'm not going to sit here and argue with you. We have a traffic court for that. Court? Oh, you don't want to go to court. It's way downtown. I know where it is. I'm there every week. I like courts. It's the one place where a citizen can get up and speak his mind about the way you cops harass law-abiding motorists. Harass? We harass nobody. <laughs> when a man jumps a stop sign, he endangers motorists and pedestrians alike. And it's our duty to stop him and give him a ticket. Then do your duty. <coughs> Wait, I'll talk to my partner. <laughs> All right, break it up, folks. There's nothing going on. Come on, break it up. Hi. <laughs> uh, look, Mr. Conroy, you seem to be a nice fellow. I am not a nice fellow. I am a troublemaker. <laughs> that big baboon claims I jumped the stop sign. Oh, no, no, Mr. Conroy, my partner's a nice guy. He, he just gets a little excited. He also can't write. All I want is a ticket. Look, Mr. Conroy, what will a ticket solve? With this little lesson you just learned yourself... Look, what's the matter with you guys? You stop me and tell me I broke the law? Give me a ticket. Or maybe you got your hand out. 
Look, Conroy, I don't have to take that from anybody. Then give me a ticket. Don't tell me what to do. You guys need big cars go around breaking the laws, and when we stop you, you tell us what to do. He's a troublemaker. That's what he is, a troublemaker. Stay out of this country. <laughs> now, look, this thing can be handled very simply. It certainly can. Just give me a ticket. Give me a ticket. Give me a ticket. Is that all you can say? You've got to stay out of this. Well, you're not doing any better than me. Will you let me handle this? I... Stay here. <laughs> what do you think you're doing? I'm writing out a ticket for you. For what? For jumping a stop sign. Did you see me do it? No, but they did. Then let them make it out. Look, mister, what's the difference? You want a ticket? I make out good tickets. <laughs> oh, now they brought in the precinct comic. Look, wise guy. <laughs> Don't call me a wise guy, wise guy. We run into jokers like you every day. Look, Mr. Conroy, you said you wanted a ticket. I want you to make it out. I want you in court with me. He's a lawyer, that's what he is, a lawyer. I can tell by the low license plates. I am no lawyer, I'm just a citizen who's gonna get justice done. Give me a ticket! We ought to give him a ticket just to teach him a lesson. Stay out of this country. Nobody calls me a wise guy. Stay out of this country. Uh, look, Mr. Conroy. Come on, give me a ticket, I asked you. <laughs> I guess the fellows got their wires crossed. I'm Officer Riley. Conroy, you're Irish, aren't you? Yeah. And I can recognize 200 pounds of Blarney when I see it. Look, don't get tough with me, mister. You get your ticket. When? What are you going to do? Hold me up all day? Keep asking for it. You get your ticket. I'm asking for it now. Come on, come on. Who do I have to see to get a ticket? What's the trouble? Uh, well, Inspector, this man just jumped a stop sign. Did you give him a ticket? No, not yet, sir. Then give him a ticket. Yes, sir. Thank heaven he wasn't speeding, we'd have to call out the National Guard. <laughs> All right, break it up. Get back on duty, you men. <laughs> you gave out a ticket. You gave out a ticket. <laughs> After all I went through to put you on that boat, you gave out a ticket. Sir, we ran into one of those nuts. Yeah, we couldn't talk him out of it. <laughs> Sir, there's a rule that you can pick a replacement to appear in court in our place. Yeah, and if you let me talk to the men, I can make a switch. You stay out of this. Anderson, call an assembly right here. Men, Tootie and Muldoon have to appear in traffic court Thursday. Now, according to regulations, I can appoint a replacement for them. Now, who wants to do replacement for them Wednesday? Wallace? Okay, if someone will take my school crossings in the afternoon. All right, who'll cover the school crossings? I'll cover. You'll cover for Wallace. All right. Okay, Nicholson. That's my day off. I'll switch with them. I've got a special up in Katona Park. Right, it will take it will call. You take the A2 I'll call. Take. Nicholson, will you take my bank run? I'll take the bank run, but who'll cover the park? Swenson will take the I'll park. Take the well, I can Somebody's cover, cover that. I can cover the park. I have the bank run. That's my day off. Anderson, you've heard of this boy. Get it out of here! I never want to see it again! <laughs> From now on, all I want are notes. Notes I can tear up and throw away. And you too. Go on. Get on that fishing trip and if I hear one word, one more word! Men, I think you all better leave now. There's nothing that can undermine the morale of a police station than the men seeing their captain cry. <laughs> We're going out on that baby over there. We're going to get us some swordfish. Well, good luck. A rowboat. Yeah. Hey, I wonder what's keeping O'Hara's brother-in-law. I don't know. I... Hey, there's Dennis. O'Hara, you didn't say you were coming along. I'm sorry, fellas. I tried to call you, but I missed you. Missed us? It's all off. It's all off? It can't be. I'm sorry, fellas, but last Monday, my brother-in-law jumped a stop sign. 
Two cops gave him a ticket. He's in court today. Is your brother-in-law's name? Conroy, and you can have him. We did. Thanks for trying, Dennis. Ooh. Ooh. The rowboat. Save us the rowboat. There's a holdup in the Bronx. Brooklyn's broken out in fights. There's a traffic jam in Harlem that's backed up to Jackson Heights. There's a scout troop short a child. Cruise ships do an idle wild. Car 54, where are you?